Hey everyone, I'm Raymond Francis, and I want to talk about the Zika virus scare. You know, there they go again. You know, the World Health Organization has declared a global public health emergency, and the disease industry is promoting the latest and the greatest virus scare. You know, previous scares have included uh, the bird flu, the swine flu, the Ebola viruses. Whatever happened to those? They disappeared without causing their predicted epidemic. This time around, it's the Zika virus. So these scares have nothing more to do than creating job programs to keep all these folks employed, usually at taxpayer expense. You know, the Zika virus is being blamed for an outbreak in Brazil uh, of a condition called microcephaly where babies are born with unusually small heads. However, of the almost 4,800 reported cases in Brazil, so far only 17 have tested positive for the Zika virus. Uh, and uh, so due to overdiagnosis, um, only 404 of these have been confirmed, by the way, as actually having microcephaly. On the bottom line, there's very little scientific proof at this point in time that the Zika virus is causing this condition. Yet on February 1st, the World Health Organization declared the Zika virus a global health emergency and drug companies are working to develop Zika vaccines. A more probable cause would be the malnutrition and toxic exposures among the infants in the population exhibiting these conditions. The problem is few physicians ever think of these causes of disease, and the truth is that these deficiencies and toxicities, as well as certain infections during pregnancy, have been previously linked to microcephaly and other brain development problems. Another potential cause is that in 2014, the Brazilian government mandated that all pregnant women must receive a tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine. We already know that vaccines cause brain damage in children and most likely also damage the brain of a fetus. So given the Zika virus scare, what should we all do? First of all, don't panic. Next. Do what you should be doing in the first place. Keep your immunity strong by avoiding immune suppressing foods like sugar and immune suppressing prescription drugs and insecticides and herbicides and vaccinations. Then eat plenty of fresh vegetables and fresh fruits. Get on a high quality supplement program with adequate amounts of vitamins A and B complex and vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin E. Take adequate amounts of magnesium, selenium and zinc. Infections happen when we depress our immunity. Do it right and your immune system will keep you free of infections. And be sure to read my book, The Great American Health Hoax, because The Great American Health Hoax tells you how to stay healthy permanently. Thanks for listening.